Open up with me this morning to Mark chapter 9, verse 23 this morning. Today we're going to talk about, we've been talking about spiritual warfare, a series that we've had for several weeks now. And uh, we come under a lot of attacks from time to time. But thank God, Jesus has not left us here vulnerable to be defeated. We are to be victorious children of the Most High God. But there is instructions in God's Word that we need to understand. And when a spiritual attack comes, we need to be ready, loaded, mm -hmm. and ready to fight back. The Apostle Paul told his spiritual son Timothy to fight the good fight of faith. Amen? Amen. There is still some fighting to be done. Amen. There is still some warfare to be done. And... Uh, a lot of Christians need to give some attention to what God's Word says about how to defend yourself when you come under attack yeah. of the enemy. Because right. Satan has not been chained and locked down into the pit of darkness and thrown into the lake of fire yet. The Bible says that he still roams the earth to and fro seeking whom he may devour. He wants to devour people. He comes to steal, kill, and to destroy we still have an adversary. That old serpent of old is still out there. And not only is he there, but he's running a, a demonic army. Right. Powers of darkness, we call them. <laughs> he has a kingdom. And if you are a child of God, he's against you right. more than any other. If you are a child of God, let me say that again, you are on his list. Amen. Attack list. Hit list. So he's coming sooner or later, but thank God we got the weapons of our warfare and they are not carnal but mighty through God to pulling down every stronghold, every attack of the enemy. We got the full armor of God that we put on and hallelujah, when we are suited up, we know who we are in Christ Jesus and when the devil comes, hallelujah, he's no match for us because we're standing in Christ. Amen? Amen. Whenever you have the full armor of God on, you are, you are in Christ Jesus. And when you are in Christ Jesus, the devil never defeated Jesus not one time. Right. Even when he thought he did, by uh, him being nailed to the cross, Jesus came out victorious. Because he rose on the third day. Right. Amen? Amen? So, Mark chapter 9 verse 23 says, Read it with me. Jesus said to him, If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Let's read it again. Let's read it together. Say with me. If you can believe, come on. If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Hallelujah. What do you believe that God believes? Amen. What do you believe? It's a, a, it's, a, it's a shame that the church don't believe everything. They pick and choose what they believe. But Jesus said if you believe all things, not some things, but all things are possible to him who believes. Amen. Are you a believer this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I preach the gospel all over places, different, different nations, out of different continents, Africa, Asia. And whenever I go there, I, I, I get in front of different congregations, different, different people of different cultures, uh, nationalities, and so forth. And some people have heard the gospel, and some have not heard the gospel of Jesus Christ in the world. For instance, Africa has been saturated. Most of Africa has been saturated with the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's a lot of Christians in Africa. There's a lot of Christians in Haiti. It's been saturated. I don't know any other nation in the world that's been more saturated with missionaries and the gospel than Haiti. But yet it's still a mess. They have an internal war over there right now. Uh, gangs are taking over Haiti. They have uh, the guy that's taking it over uh, is uh, uh, his religion is voodoo. Mm -hmm. 
And he's believing demonic powers are, are guiding him into bringing Haiti into uh, oneness and greatness. And Listen, any time a demon's guiding you, you ain't going to be the experience in victory too long. That's right. That's right. Because the devil's number one intention is to steal, kill, and destroy you. And that's exactly what's happening over there in Haiti is destruction. And Satan is behind it. So, but the, the church has believed so many different things that the church is splintered. It's divided. Some believe in uh, the power of the Holy Ghost. Some believe in the evidence of speaking in tongues. Some don't. Some believe in healing. Some believe in laying hands on the sick. Some believe in anointing the sick with oil. Some don't. Some believe in music. Some churches don't believe in music. They don't believe in instruments. Some churches believe uh, in signs, wonders, and miracles. And some believe that passed away a long time ago with the, with the early church and the apostles. The church has believed so many different things that it's really sometimes in America here to find somebody that will agree with you on what the Bible actually says. That's right. Amen. Amen. And then when you believe something they don't, you you feel shunned because you can see they just turned you off just like that. That's right. Anybody ever been talking to somebody and the conversation been going good, then all of a sudden you get talking about, oh man, Pentecost Sunday, and they shut down. Oh yeah. Come on. But, anyhow, so this morning, what we're going to do in God's Word is we're going to uh, combat the spirit of unbelief. Amen. There is a spirit in the world called unbelief. Amen. And if you ain't careful, that spirit will jump off on you. I was thinking this morning, how many people have been to church through the years? You can think about it yourself. You know, if you've been to church for a long time, many years, you've been maybe this church, that church, and you knew at one time this brother over here was saved and on fire for God. Then our this sister, hey, she used to be lead intercessory prayer group. But now you look back, where are they today? What happened? Why ain't they still on fire? Why ain't they still in church? Why ain't they still on the worship team? What happened to them? Right. Where'd they go? They disappeared. Jesus didn't disappear. He didn't go anywhere. But what happened? These believers backslid. Yeah, that's right. Come on. The Bible says backslide. That's right. And if you if you go backslide, that means you're going in the wrong direction. Amen. Mm -hmm. Jesus over here, and instead of you pressing in and going towards Him, you begin to turn your back on Him, and you backslide. And you go back into the world that you came out of. That's right. That's called backsliding. Amen. You don't hear much about that word in church no more. But I've known, I have known a lot of people that once used to be saved on fire for God, love Jesus, love to talk about Jesus, but now you can't find them nowhere. They have let their hearts go astray and they have backslidden. And what happened was the spirit of unbelief Somewhere in their life got into their heart. And they began to not believe, but disbelieve mm -hmm. in who they used to believe. There's only one explanation for backsliding is you begin to waver. You begin to doubt. And then all of a sudden your doubt turned into full-blown unbelief. That's, right. That's why you got people that ain't on fire no more. They lost their fire. They lost their unction. They lost their, their desire and passion for Jesus Christ. They went backwards. It's an ugly thing to see. And the longer they stay in that backslidden condition, it's the harder to get them out of it. Amen. You hear me? This spirit of unbelief is, uh, is a worldwide spirit. That's why when I preach overseas, I preach to people in, in Asia who have never heard the gospel. They ain't never heard of Jesus before. People in Africa, they've already been introduced to Jesus. I have to understand who is standing uh, in front of me and what kind of a congregation I have when I preach. You have to know. I have, I have uh, my leaders over in Asia, when we have a night crusade, I said, how many of these people 
in, out of these thousand right here, how many of them do you think ever heard the gospel? And sometimes they'll say, maybe 10% have heard. That means I got 90% of that thousand people crowd that ain't never heard of Jesus before. That tells me what I need to preach. That tells me what direction I need to go. Amen? But you got people in the world, and pe some are believers, and some are unbelievers. Amen? Amen. Uh, unbelief. The word in Greek means apiste. And it means faithless. Faithless. Unbeliever. It also means disobedience. When you see people walking in disobedience, day in and day out, their belief system somewhere is messed up. Amen. Can I have another amen? amen? Thank you, Bart. I appreciate you, man. <laughs> their belief system is messed up. If they continue to walk in disobedience, they have bought a lie from the pit of hell from somewhere the, along the line, the devil told them a lie, and they have bought into it, and they think it's okay to continue to live in sin when they are not walking in faith. They are walking in disobedience because of the unbelief of believing what the Scriptures have to say. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of people that will justify their way of living by the Word of God. Come on. They'll tell you it's okay for them to live the way they're living because they can justify it. They can find one scripture in here and say, well, this is what Jesus said. I was talking to a fellow not long ago about uh, homosexuality and he said Jesus never said nothing about homosexuality. Come on. Come on. Whole denomination. Divided. I'm like, man, all you got to do is read the Word. Amen. I mean, this is plain and simple. This ain't. This is, this is like black and white. This ain't. You don't need no special interpretation to see right. what God is saying. If you rightly divide the Word of God and look into it, you'll find out Jesus can never justify any sin. It don't matter if it's homosexuality. It don't matter if it's adultery. It don't matter if it's greed. It don't matter if it's talk, backbiting, talking about your neighbor. It don't matter what, uh, it, it, stealing, whatever kind of sin it is. Sin is sin. It can't be justified. Amen. If it ain't covered under the blood of the Lamb, somebody got to pay for it. That's right. And the wages of sin is what? Yeah. Death. So, unbelief is safe because it's, it takes no risk. Anybody that's walking in unbelief, they, they take no risk. That means if Jesus says get out of the boat, they ain't getting out of the boat. They ain't risking. If it don't work, I'm going to get wet. They, ain't gonna, they don't have no faith. When Jesus told Peter to get out of the boat or, or said he could come, he only spoke, come. He didn't say, Peter, you can come. When Peter said, if that's you, permit me to come to you, Jesus said one word, come. Amen. That meant the invitation was given to all 12 disciples in that boat. All 12 of them could have got out and he decided by faith to walk on water. But only one of them had enough faith, hallelujah, to get up and try to walk on water. And when, Peter, when Jesus said, come, Peter said, here I go. That's the kind of faith and the person Jesus is looking for today is not folk sinners or church sinners, but folks willing to get up and go do something. Amen. 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 When you're walking on the water, you're walking in the supernatural. And he was not, the miracle was, Peter was walking on the word, not the water. That's right. Come on. The word had to come forth. If he had not got the word to come, he'd have never stayed up on the water. Amen. The miracle happened when he stepped out on the word. You have to receive the word. Unbelievers do not receive the word. And unbelievers sentence themselves to a place called hell because they did not receive the word. That's right. Amen. Hell going to be full of people that didn't believe the word. Mm -hmm. right. Come on. So good, yes. They didn't believe. Because the Bible said, whosoever shall believe or call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. saved. Whosoever. Mm -hmm. It don't matter. 
what color, what nation. It don't matter the stature, your education, whatever. If you believe, you shall be saved. Period. Amen? Amen. Hell will be full of people that decided after they heard the gospel. I don't believe that. Therefore, their torment in hell will be, I had a chance to be in heaven. But I chose to walk away. I chose not to accept Jesus into my heart and confess him as my Lord and Savior and walk with him. I chose not to, and I am sentenced into this burning lake of fire for the rest of my life. Come on. And that that thought will torment them for all eternity. Come on. They chose not to believe. Amen. There's people in this world that only hear the gospel one time and come to Jesus. That's right. There's people that's heard the gospel for a thousand times by radio, by book, by a pamphlet, by preaching, by going to church, different ways. They've heard it a thousand times and chose not to believe. Come on. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, chapter 53, verse 1, it says the fool has said in his heart that there is no God. Come on. There's a, if you are a fool, God calls you a fool. And he said you're a fool if you don't believe in me. I'm telling you there's a God that created the heaven. The earth, the sea, and all that in it. He put the sun in the sky, the moon in the sky. He, hallelujah, he put the sea out there. He created everything that you see. He's our creator. He created us in his image and in his likeness. And if you don't believe that, hallelujah, you will end up in hell. Amen. He is your creator. That's right. It don't matter if you believe it or if you don't believe it. But if you believe it, you can be saved. Amen. But if you don't believe it, it ain't God's fault. That's right. That you didn't make it. Amen. Come on. The fool has said in his heart that there is no God. We got a definition for that kind of folks. It's called atheism. <laughs> an atheist. You ever, anybody in here ever encountered an atheist? Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, they say there is no God. You know, the, the Bible says in the book of Romans, there will be no excuse mm -hmm. for folks on the day of judgment. Mm. No excuse. You can't say, I didn't know. Oh, because God said he even speaks through the creation. Everything that's ever been created had a creator. That's right. <clears throat> Every jumbo jet you see on Hartsfield Atlanta Airport, that airplane just didn't pop up out of nowhere. That's right. It has a creator. Somebody put that thing together. That Chevrolet or that Ford or whatever you drove up in here this morning, it just it, it just wake up and you find it in your drive one day. Poof! There's a new Ford out there. There's a new Chevy out there. Wow, I wonder how that got there. It just don't happen that way. Somebody put that thing together. It went through an assembly line. And it come with an instruction manual. Amen? This is man's instruction manual right here. This is your creator's instruction manner, uh, manual right here for every mankind. This book has every answer for you as long as you live on planet Earth. This book has all the answers for you. If you neglect this book, and neglect the truth, it ain't God's fault. But the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. But I want you to know, there is a God. I believe in God. I believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. I believe in all the gospel. That's why we have on our sign out there in the front, it said full gospel on it. And full gospel means I believe everything that's written in this book from Genesis all the way to Revelation. I believe in the book. Hallelujah. Every now and then when I preach, I'll encounter somebody that'll come up to me afterwards and say, I don't believe it that way. Come on. Come on. I said, I don't know what kind of way you believe it, but I believe it the way Jesus said it. Amen. 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 I ain't going to preach nothing in here but, but Jesus and the Word of God. 
Hallelujah. You got, got a problem with it? I say go back to the book. Amen. Go back to this book Amen. and read it thoroughly instead of forming you a half an opinion based on what some some flake, nut, or fruit told you. Hallelujah. Right. You get in the book for yourself and find out what the Word of God said before you form a belief system. Amen. That's right. Amen. Come on now. Amen. Amen. Come on. Glory to God. We got enough flakes, nuts, and fruit cakes in the church today. Hallelujah. That, that not would only quote a word, but a half word. That's right. Come on. They won't quote the whole thing like it's written. They'll quote it the way it fits them. Uh -huh. Come on. Amen. Amen. But I say the devil's a liar. Amen. Amen. Y'all on board with me this morning? Amen. Amen. Yes. Okay. They was uh tell you a little story that goes along with this. Uh they were two fishermen headed out to go fishing and they were headed down this lonely road and they got to a a place where they the road was blocked and on it it had a sign and it said uh, road closed on it. Pretty easy to understand, right? Road closed, road blocked. Well they seen some some tire print that went around the sign. So these old buddies, fishing buddies said, Well, we just gonna go around it. And we've done that before. Mm-hmm. No trespassing. <laughs> Anyhow, these old buddies, these old fishing buddies go around the sign, and about three miles down the road, they come to a, to a, uh, <coughs> where the road come to an end, the bridge is out. They ain't no way to get across. So they turn around, come back the three miles, and on the way back, as they approach that road close sign, they looked on the back of it. When they came in, they read the front, road closed. When they come out, there was a, 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 an inscription written on it that said, uh, it really was closed, wasn't it? <laughs> it really was closed. Come on. Which means then that some people won't take truth. They're going to have to find out for themselves. That's right. Come on. And listen. When people have gone before you and walked their path and they tell you there's a hole down there, listen, they've already been there and done that. Don't be stupid and think they ain't telling me the truth. Come on. And then you get down there and you find yourself in the hole and then you can make a phone call looking so not too smart. Amen. Let's put it that way. Come on. I fell in this hole. You told me it was him. <laughs> You know, how many times I know for myself as a young boy, my parents told me a lot of things not to do. And get what? <laughs> I didn't listen. Sometimes I found myself in the jailhouse. Come on. Sometimes I found myself in the principal office getting That's a right. pilot. Back in the day when I went to school, they gave you five licks. That was the maximum sentence with five good licks. And man, I had so many five licks on my behind, my hind end was hard. Uh -huh. I could take five licks like it wasn't nothing. Come on. I'm talking about they would jack you up. Wow! But I wouldn't listen to what my parents said. I thought I had, they, were, they, they wasn't telling me the truth. Children, if you hear this morning, ain't many children here, but if your parents tell you something, it's because they know best. Amen. The best thing you can do is listen to them mm -hmm. because they have been there and done that. That's right. If a parent tells you that stove is hot, uh -huh. it's hot. Sure. don't touch it. Amen. And you go back there and begin to wash your hands or whatever in the bathroom and you hear a young and holler, Woo! <laughs> you know what happened? Mm -hmm. He touched yeah, the stove <laughs> that you told him was hot. That's right. It would hurt. But for some reason, they have to find out for themselves. Come on. That is the human nature of us that we don't want to walk in truth sometimes. It is a spiritual battle to walk in truth. There is a warfare that goes on in walking in truth because your flesh don't want to walk in truth. 
It wants to walk on the on the wild side. Amen. I know ain't none of y'all ever walked on the wild side, but <laughs> I was there one time. Oh yeah. And it has consequences. That's right. Amen. So, uh, let's take a look at Hebrews chapter 3, verse 12. We're going to talk about a few things this morning called the manifestations, manifestations of unbelief. That means when the spirit of unbelief is working, you can see it through these manifestations. Okay? Because some people don't know how to identify spiritual attacks. But when an unbelief is coming, this is what you got to look for now to help people get them out of it. Because if they ain't believing, they ain't getting nothing. An unbeliever, a person that's walking in unbelief gets ex exactly what they're believing for. Come on. And that's nothing. They ain't believing for nothing, and they ain't getting nothing. That's what an unbeliever gets. If you want to see the promises of God, which are yes and amen, if you want to see these, this, this Bible come alive in your, in your life, you have to believe it. One amen would have been good. Amen. Did y'all hear what I said? Was I speaking Cambodia language? Amen. You get what you believe. If you don't believe in healing, it'll work for you that way. You won't get healed. Don't worry about it. But don't hinder nobody else. Amen? Amen. Amen. If you don't believe in, in casting out demons, that's okay. But don't hinder nobody else that does because somebody else might need it. Amen. Come on. I still believe in that my God and my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ still is a miracle worker. That's right. Amen. I still believe in miracles. Amen. I believe in them. I, they won't nobody ever be able to tell me, oh, that, that's past. No, I don't care if I pray for you and you don't get healed, that don't stop me from believing that God is still a healer. Because he's a healer, whether it manifests in you or not, because the Word said that he is the God that healeth thee. Amen. It ain't my experience that makes the truth truth. It is the Word. If God said it, it's truth. Amen. My experience might lie to me. Amen. Come on. So, in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 12, turn there, Brother Carver. <clears throat> Hebrews 3, 12. Says. No. Oh yeah. It says, Beware, brethren. Who's he talking to? Brethren. Uh, He's talking to believers. That's right. Brethren. Beware. Watch out. Lest there be in any of you. An evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Look at verse 19. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Couldn't enter in where? He's talking about the promised land. When God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, mm -hmm. he brought them out with signs and wonders. Right, amen. Amen. Put yourself in the, in the shoes of the Israelites. Come on. For 430 years you've been crying out, we need deliverance. That's right. We're being oppressed by the Egyptians. We're building these pyramids for them. We're building mansions for them. We're building castles for them. We're making uh, brick with mud and hay, and, and we are slaves, and it's hard. We have taskmasters that are beating us down every day in this hot sun. And we working and working. And God came after 430 years. He brought a man by the name of Moses. And he came to deliver them from the hand of Pharaoh. And when he seen Pharaoh, he said to Pharaoh, God said, tell him to let my people go. Come on. Well, after many signs and wonders, Pharaoh finally decided to turn them loose. Right. And when he turns them loose, they go out into the wilderness and, 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 and the desert, 
and they come to the Red Sea. And then they hear the chariots coming behind them. And, the, and Pharaoh's coming, and he's mad. He's going to destroy every Israelite. He's probably over one to three million Israelites out there in that desert. And he's coming to kill them. Come on. And there's a Red Sea before them, but the Israelites see God split the Red Sea. That's right. Amen. Amen. Is that a mighty miracle or what? Amen. Not only did they see the sea part and they walked across on dry land, they got to look back and see Pharaoh and his army get drowned in that sea. That's right. They Amen. seen that. They seen the signs and the wonders in, in, when he brought them out. And then uh, he fed them manna in the morning. Bread came down from heaven every morning and fed them in the wilderness. That was a supernatural act of God. Then it, that wasn't good enough for him, so he brought quail in the evening. That's Bread right. in the morning, manna in the morning, quail in the evening. For 40 years, they had manna in the morning, quail in the evening. Quail, I mean, <laughs> my goodness. Manna in the morning, quail in the evening. That's why they say we ain't got no quail now. <laughs> You go hunting the quail, you had to have you had to have farm raised quail. Ain't no wild birds out there no more. Mm -hmm. Come on. But God supernaturally brought them in. That was a not, another sign of wonder. But that wasn't good enough for them. They cried out for water, and God brought water out of a rock. That's he right. continued to supernaturally take care of them. When he brought them out of Egypt, there were none feeble among them. They wasn't no blind. They wasn't no lame. They didn't have no hard hearing. There wasn't nothing wrong with these folks. And their clothes on their back and the shoes on their feet didn't wear out for 40 years. Come on. Come on. Do y'all hear me? Yeah. Amen. But these folks continue not to believe. Uh -huh. and, and the Bible said they never got to enter in to the promised land, the land flowing with milk and honey. They didn't because of unbelief. Come on. Come on. What will unbelief get you? It'll stop you from getting blessed. That's right. It'll stop you from getting all that God promised you. Amen. Unbelief. And guess what? They died in the wilderness. They did. And they died because of unbelief. Amen. People are doing without today based on their belief system. That's right. You believe? Mark 9, 23 said what? If you believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Amen. All things. You have to believe it to receive it. You have to receive it to believe it. Mm -hmm. You've got to get on board with the word of God. Amen. There's nothing too hard for God. Amen. That's right. But you have to believe. Some people think God's going to do everything, but here's the condition. You got to believe the word of God. Right. You got to believe. You got to step out. You got to trust what God said. And you got to keep moving. You can't come back after you spy the land out and say, it's just like you said. It's flowing with milk and honey. But there's some giants in the land and we look like grasshoppers. Guess what that was? Unbelief. Amen. And it spread through the whole camp. That's right. And they died in the wilderness. Come on. God kept showing himself fire by night, cloud by day. He was with them the whole time, but yet they still chose not to believe regardless of what he did and how he showed them how real he was. That's right. God is real. You can't, you can't see him, but he's doing all these signs and wonders. You can't see him, but he's the one that split the Red Sea. Amen. Amen. He's the one that fed you in the morning and in the evening. He's the one that, that's with you all the time. Cloud by day, keep you from getting sunburned. Fire by night, keep you from freezing to death. Amen. He's with you all the time, but you can't see him. But they, they reverted back to their belief system that came from the Egyptian 430 years. They had to see something to believe it. That's why they made them a golden calf. In the, in, in the desert right. when Moses went up on the mountain. Right. They wanted them a God that they could touch, That's that right. they could see. But that ain't the kind of God we serve. That's the Bible right. says we serve an invisible God. Amen. He might be invisible to my eyes, but he's more real than you. That's right. That's right. Come on. Because you wouldn't even be here if he hadn't made you. Amen. Lord have mercy. Yes. Amen. 
Y'all getting anything out of this yet? Amen. Hebrews 3.12 says they, because of unbelief, they departed. That's where that backslidden scripture comes in from. They departed from the living God. People backslide because of unbelief. They stopped believing. They stopped trusting. That's right. They, they, they lost the faith. Some people say, well, I don't believe that. I, I, I believe once saved, always saved. Huh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> once saved, always saved. Come on. Huh. That's, a, that's, a, that's another sermon all by itself. Come on. But I'm here to tell you, if you say and truly say, you'll stay saved. That's right. But listen, there is an opportunity for you to depart from the living God. If that ain't true, it was written in here. Amen. I just read it to you. They departed from the living God because of unbelief. That's right. You gotta believe. There's a there's a there's a religion out there, y'all, called universalism. Mm -hmm. If you hear about it, shun it. Mm -hmm. Rebuke it. That's right. Don't let it get in you nowhere. The universalism said that you don't have to believe. Mm. That all Muslims, all Hindus, all Buddhists, all Jehovah Witnesses, all Mormons, all everybody is going to heaven. Why? They say, because Jesus died on the cross. Yes, he did die on the cross. And he rose from the dead. But the Bible says, you must believe. That's right. They say, you don't have to believe. He paid for it. Yeah, he paid for it. But it don't become yours until you believe in it. That's right. Amen. Amen. And they're getting a lot of people to follow after them in this occult. Because you don't have to, listen. If everybody going to heaven without believing, why do we need evangelists? That's right. Come on. Why does evangelists need to go tell anybody about Jesus? And Jesus said, go ye in all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. That's right. Why, why go preach to anybody if everybody going? Mm -hmm. I mean, if that was true, he just went ahead and wrapped all this up in. That ain't no truth to that. That's right. Universalism. Y'all remember that. That's a, that's a doctrine of demons. Right. Y'all hear me out there on that, on that YouTube? That is a doctrine of demon. Universalism. It is a demon doctrine. Mm -hmm. Come from the pit of hell. You have to believe in Jesus Christ, and if you don't, you shall perish according to God's holy word. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Number two. Number, number one manifestation is somebody turning away from God. Spirit of unbelief on them. Okay? Y'all still with me this morning? Amen. 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 Come on. Number one, if you see somebody starting to turn away from God, we can see it when you say, hey, how about coming to church with me, son? They got every excuse in the world. Oh, come on. They turn it. They used to tote the Bible around. You see them over down there reading the Bible. They ain't reading the Bible at all no more. Come on. Guess what they doing? They done turn. How about going to prayer group with me? Used to go with you all the time. I got every excuse in the book. I can't go. They done turned. What happened? Somewhere in their belief system, they had decided to turn away from God, depart from God, and they backsliding. And the spirit of unbelief is coming to steal their life. Number two. Manifestation number two of unbelief. If, if somebody has the spirit of unbelief on them, they're going to begin to question God's power. Come on. They won't accept it. They question it. Uh, look at Psalms chapter 78. Psalm 78. I'm going to try to get this finished, y'all. I'm going to do my best. Y'all hang with me. Psalm 78. Y'all take notes. Write this down. Psalm 78. Look at verse 6 through 8 first. 6, 7, and 8 first. That generation to come might know them. The children who would be born. That they may arise 
and declare them to their children that they may set their hope in God and not forget the works of God but keep his commandments and he and, and may not be like their fathers a stubborn and rebellious generation a generation that did not set its heart aright and whose spirit was not faithful to God mm. what it's saying right here is as believers we have an obligation we have an assignment to our children to read the things of the Bible to them to let them know how God brought Moses out of, I mean, the children of Israel out of Egypt. They need to know about the signs, wonders, and miracles. They need to know about the Old Testament miracles. They need to know about the miracles in the New Testament that Jesus did, that Paul did. You need to always talk to them about the wonderful works of God. So that the hallelujah, it'll get so deeply in, uh, put down inside of their spirit that they'll know that our God is a God of miracles, signs, and wonders. Hallelujah, when somebody comes across them with a spirit of unbelief at schoolhouse, they'll be able to rise up and say, oh no, I know my God split the Red Sea. Amen. Ain't no doubt in my mind. But we have to teach them and train them so they'll know. They said, it says, it says you've got to teach them or let they'll become like their forefathers. Come on. Come on. Who had an evil, stubborn, rebellious heart. Now, look at Psalm 78, same, same chapter, verse 17 through 22. Starting in verse 17. But they sinned even more against him by rebelling against the Most High in the wilderness. And they tested God in their heart by asking for food of their fancy. Yet they spoke against God. They said, Can God prepare a table in the wilderness? Verse 20. Behold, he struck the rock so the waters gushed out and the stream overflowed. Can he give bread also? Can he provide meat for his people? So they began to test God. We know God can do this, but can God do that? Come on. And the Bible said they can send him to sin and rebel against God. Their unbelief reached him, and the Bible said God became furious. Look at verse 21. Therefore, the Lord heard this and was furious. Uh -huh. Ain't anything to make God more matter or anything after he does everything in the world he can do for you and you still not believe. Come on. That's your problem, not God's. Amen. Uh, that's right. I know people today that they, they, they call me and, and they going through a, a storm and and they be getting beat down and, and, and it's whoa, oh poor pitiful me. God blesses this one over here and he does that one for this one for that, and but he don't ever do nothing for me. I said, man, what the word are you talking about? I know when you were sick, how God healed you. I know when you was in that hospital and you had a heart attack, God brought you out. What you talking about it? God ain't never done nothing for you. Come on. How easy it is for us to forget what God has done for us. Amen. 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 Come on. Man, you got to always reflect back what God had done for me before, God can do again. Amen. Come on, y'all. Amen. Man, oh man. It made God furious after he'd done all them works for the children of Israel. And then them still question, can God do this? They they. They, did, they, they, they had manna in the morning and, and quail in the evening, but they was like saying, well, where's the steak and the baked potatoes? Come on. They wanted something fancy. Yeah. God gave them exactly what they deserved. Mm -hmm. It kept them alive. Amen. If it hadn't been for God, they'd all dried up and died in the wilderness. That's right. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Take a look at number three and number four. These are manifestations of unbelief. Number three, if they hate God's messengers. 
And they resist the Holy Spirit. And you find this in Acts chapter 7. Verse 51. Acts chapter 7. Verse 51. Y'all get anything out of all this? Come on. Henry, you get, you get anything, Henry? If I ain't feeding nobody, I'm feeding you, Henry. And I'm feeding that man behind you back there. I'm so glad he's here today. He's my brother. We got a different color, but we're still the same brother. Amen. Amen. Everybody make him feel welcome this morning. Amen. Acts chapter 7, uh, seven verse 50, uh, 51. Acts 7, 51. Quickly. He said, you stiff-necked. Woo! Mm -hmm. That run happened. If, if the preacher got up and looked at the congregation and said, y'all stiff-necked folks in here! <laughs> He's like, we well, ain't going back there no more. Come on. Call me stiff neck. Now, what Stephen said. Yeah. He talking to their religious group that, that came against him. You stiff neck and uncircumcised in heart and ears. Mm -hmm. You always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did. So do you. Which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? Mm -hmm. The spirit of unbelief will always manifest itself in it hates God's messengers. True messengers, he hates them. That spirit does. And it always resists the Holy Spirit. Listen, we got churches today churches that resist the moving of the Holy Spirit. That's right. They quench the Holy Spirit. How do you think Jesus, if he walked up in there would like that? I'm telling y'all what, if Jesus walked in a lot of churches today, they, he'd be apt to be escorted out. Why? Because he'd tear their churches up. That's right. They'd hear some truth that they ain't heard lately. Amen. And he'd be doing miracle signs and wonders. If they didn't believe in it, man, they'd be saying, man, I'm sorry, but you can't, you can't be doing that in here. We don't believe in that. And Jesus would be like, what? Y'all supposed to be my people. But whenever they come against Stephen, they stoned him to death. They hated him because he stood for truth. In the Old Testament, he, he even quoted, y'all hated, y'all forefathers hated the prophets. God anointed a prophet to go tell the king and Israel a word from God. And a lot of times it was repent. Uh -huh. Y'all got to get yourself right. He gave them a word of correction and the king didn't want to hear it. That's right. And the people didn't want to hear it. They would stop up their ears. Say we don't want to hear from this guy no more. Don't let him come up in here no more. And they ended up killing them. Killing a lot of the prophets. They throw Jeremiah in a well. They didn't want to hear what he had to say. An abandoned well. Throw him in it. Left him in there to die. They put a lot of them in prison. They chopped John the Baptist's head off as a prophet. That's the spirit of unbelief. They always turn against God's messengers. I know people in the ministry today, they walk in signs, wonders, and miracles. Jesus is using them to bring healing, deliverance, and so forth. And man, you look on the on, on, on the internet and half the church will be really few of these people talking about their false prophets because they walk in power. They walk in the power of the Spirit. And they put them down. They try to crucify them. You know why? Because they don't have it. They don't have the anointing. Therefore, they don't have it, don't know how to get it, don't want to surrender to it. Therefore, the ones that do, they try to crucify them. Try to destroy their ministries. That's wrong. And it's coming from a spirit of unbelief. Amen. They hate God's messenger and they resist the Holy Spirit. Well, I'll, I'll do one more and that's it. John 12, 37. 
John chapter 12, verse 37. 12, 37. John 12, verse 37. The manifestation is they just count the evidence. It don't matter what you show them. It don't matter what God has done. No matter what they have seen, no matter what they have heard, you can show it to them in the Bible itself. And they still disagree with it. That is the spirit of unbelief. Let me tell y'all something. Whenever you come up against the spirit of unbelief, you will know them. Because it, that spirit is so strong, it ain't easily hidden. I mean, you'll see the manifestation of it. You'll see how they come against you. You'll see how they shut you down. And after they shut you down, they're going to try to run you out of town. Come on. John 12, 37 says, But although, but although he had done so many signs before them, they did not believe in him. He had performed miracles after miracles after miracles in front of these people. And they still, because of the hardness of their heart and the spirit of unbelief, regardless of what he showed them, they would not believe no matter what. Mm -hmm. That's the spirit of unbelief. Yeah. That's, a, that's an atheist. No matter what Jesus does, they would refuse to believe. Mm -hmm. I've encountered people before. I went to pray for a lady one time. I told y'all about it. Needed to pray about it. Very sick about to die. Deathbed. Asked to come pray. I said, I'll come pray. Oh, that's what the Bible said. Go pray for the sick. <laughs> the Holy Spirit said, get your anointing on. Take your anointing on with you. And anoint this lady with oil. That scripture. James chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. Mm -hmm. Call for the elders of the church to pray for this, for, uh, and, and anoint the sick with oil. Mm -hmm. And the prayer of faith will save the sick. I know them at all. I know them at all. I got a call. I go. I'm taking my oil. I'm all in the Bible, all in the Scripture. Everything good on my side. Mm -hmm. I get there and, and I break it. I get reach in my pocket. I got a little vial of oil. No, no. And I start to dab it on my hand like that. And that woman screamed at me and said, "Way, what you doing?" I said, "I'm anointing you with oil." She said, oh, no, you ain't anointing me with oil. She said, I don't believe in it. I said, why don't you believe? She said, my pastor said that we don't anoint with oil. I said, ma'am, let me show it to you in the Bible. I opened my Bible, James chapter 5, verse 14 and 15, and read it to her and showed it to her, and she said, I still don't believe it. Mm. That was the spirit of unbelief. And when she said that, it was like a a donkey. You ever been behind a donkey and he kick you? It felt like somebody kicked me in my stomach so hard, y'all. I didn't see no foot. I didn't see no donkey. I felt sick in my stomach. It felt like somebody kicked the fire out of me. I said, ooh. I ain't never had, had it hit me like that before. And I didn't know what hit me. And I went home and prayed. I said, Lord, what was that that hit me in that living room? He said, that was the spirit of unbelief mm. that attacked you. Whew. You know, that woman died in about two weeks. Mm. She rejected what God wanted to do for her. She didn't believe. And because of her unbelief, it cost her her life. <clears throat> Unbelief will steal all the blessings of God from you. Amen. It don't matter what you show them in the Bible, they still don't believe it. Let me speak to you from home. It is our honor to come into your home today. We love you. We hope this message has been an eye-opener for you. Listen, you have to 
uh, take a stand against unbelief because it will steal every blessing of God from you. Take a stand. If you have backslidden, hey, repent. Return back to Jesus with all your heart. He will still receive you, wash you in his blood. If you haven't received Jesus, confess him as your Lord and Savior. The Bible says if you believe in him, you shall be born again. You shall be saved. We love you. Keep tuning in. The best is yet to come. Jesus is Lord. God bless you.